Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday, we got a couple things to talk about. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is one of the uh, nice features of this hobby that we're involved in with dealing with a lot of tools is that we, uh, we often, because we come across so many tools, we're usually better judges of what uh, makes a decent tool and what isn't such a decent tool. And sometimes, you know, the construction of the tool itself makes it inferior. For example, you can have a hammer that has a bad casting or is just inferior metal and it has an inferior handle. So you say that that tool's not as good. But sometimes it's about preference. You know, sometimes, especially when you handle a bunch of different tools, you say, well, I like the handle of this one better than the handle of that one. I like this and that. And uh, so that's that's where we get some experience from from this hobby. And I, I have a uh, an old antique tap and die set I want to talk about today. And uh, let's get to it. I'll show you now, what I for mean. For some of you, this uh, might be a little monotonous what we're going over, but uh, it's very good beginner information here. This here is a vintage, it's called a handy tap and die set. And uh, you can see from the construction, a lot of times they came with older uh, wooden boxes, a lot of the tap and die sets to try and entice the would be buyer. Uh, this particular set here, we could see is a very basic set and the good nice thing about it is it comes with very common sizes it comes with quarter inch by 20 5 16 by 18 and i believe it's a 3 8 by 16 i think that's the three sizes in here and those are, are very common sizes it comes with the taps and the die the tap is for making uh threads in two holes of the appropriate size and the die like this is made to make threads on the outside of a rod and it comes with a, a die holder which is this here you could see how the uh, die fits into this holder and uh, there's a little screw and there's a little notch in the die that uh, the screw will hold it from spinning in the die uh, when you put this into a, a die holder there's a little lip you can see that little lip there and you want that lip to be facing up and there's a, usually uh, there's two sides to a die. One side is a little bit wider than the other so that it's easier starting and uh, you want the easier starting side facing down so when this is in here it's uh, that's how it works. Now a couple things to note about this set. This set I don't know who the maker was, but you could see it's it's almost like an inferior, a very inexpensive set. Remember, years ago they used to have cheap tools too. You know, even though today we think of Chinese tools a lot of times as being the cheap tools, but back then they had uh, places that were like this set would be a very inexpensive set. And uh, you could see here, this is uh, uh, the the die, and you could looks almost. If you look at it, it looks almost off center. You could see that the quality isn't there. Uh, the printing, there's no engraving except for I see a uh, 18 up here, and uh, I guess this would be over here, even the five or the five sixteenths. See that there? The five is kind of more so it's an inferior set. But what makes it really interesting to me is just how inferior this uh, this conversion is die was now this is a little conversion puck that fits in here and it converts your die handle into a tap now handle. how this would work is you see this little puck has three squares in it and they correspond to the three tap sizes that we have here that come with the kit now this tap here the 5 16th by 18 would fit in the medium hole like this now uh, this is an uh, an inferior tool, an inferior design tool, and I'll tell you why. First of all, anytime you want a tap or die handle, you want it to be centered. So you would want this tap ideally to be centered in the middle because it makes it that much easier when you're trying to uh, create the threads of uh, in a hole because uh, you do not want to be uh, cocked or off-cent or anything because uh, it's very difficult if you put this tap in crooked you can break the tap or you can have a crooked uh, threaded hole so by having this off to either you know off center it makes every one of these taps you know a little bit more difficult to use secondly there's nothing to hold the tap in that uh, square so when we put this in the square here you can see this wobbles around here so again that's an inferior design but it's even in the in worst case scenario it's just a horrible design and uh, that's usually how you are able to tell a decent tap set from a, uh, a tap set that 
was a little better quality was the handle that came with. That's why the old Greenfield uh, top sets had beautiful handles because that's how you could tell it was a decent set, you know. And uh, and again, you could see that these these look like uh, inexpensively made uh, dies. But again, it's a it's an inexpensive set. And uh, I'm happy to have it, but it just goes to show you that there was always, you know, lower quality tools back in the day. And, you know, we think of years ago, they made a lot of high quality tools. They did, but there were these out there too. You just don't see them as much because they went uh, to the dump. Now, there are a few different tap handles. You'll see a lot of these are usually for the smaller type taps. And uh, they range in all different sizes, but some of them can handle a tap pretty big. This one might handle a three-eighths of an inch tap or something, but... They're basically how they work, and this is a beautiful one. This one here is from Good Earl Pratt. And remember that we were saying about Miller's Falls taking these over. They're beautiful. Anything that Good Earl Pratt made was just beautiful. And you can see when you put the tap in here and you tighten this down and you give it a good snug, that should be like one piece, very solid, very tight, you know. And that's because when you go to put this in a hole and make your, your thread, uh, you need to have that positive feel that, you know, because a lot of times you could feel if it's binding or something through the tap handle. So that's why uh, everybody usually has their favorites. But um, the one thing I wanted to say about this type of tap handle, I've never, I've always liked the longer ones because I get a better feel from it. But remember how this line goes straight through and I'll show you some now other the next ones. next style of tap handle is the one I prefer and that's this type of tap handle. That's where you, you would take a, your tap and we're going to put it into this nice uh, starrett now this starrett one is considered to be the best tap handle uh ever made and you can see here when you screw this down like this this is how you would insert the tap into here screw it down and now remember this line we were talking about how that's it follows through solid piece you put it in here nice balance to it but a lot of these other tap handles have the same thing you know uh but they're all just a little bit slightly different. This is the cheaper type that you'll see. Still works good. But the worst type that I don't like is this type here. And I'll tell you why I'm not crazy about this type. How this type works, it's kind of off-centered. And you put the tap in here like this and you screw down the two screws, one on each side, to uh, capture the tap in here. And when it's captured like this, you see it like that? Now, it'll work and everything, but... Remember I was telling you about that line, now it's kind of zigzag. It's not directly in line with the tap. And believe it or not, when you're getting that feel, it, it, it you, you don't get that perfectly uh, placed position on your fingers when you're trying to get it in. So it might look like a good uh, tap handle, but these are really not my favorite. These, any one of these will work fine. Next up, as you know, I have a few utility knives and uh, I saw this a lot on eBay and I, I just was intrigued by it because you know, I like to customize uh, uh, utility knives with different paint schemes and stuff. And I, I was looking at these and I was uh, intrigued to find out, you know, what happens is a lot of times a, a company, a manufacturer will have a, a company overseas, whether it be in China, Taiwan or whatever, make a, a batch of knives for them. And what happens is they still have the mold and everything. So after they make the batch for, let's say, Stanley or something like that, then they'll take out the, the letters that might say Stanley or something else. And they'll make, they can make it for another company. They could make it for themselves or they'll make blanks. And you'll see like a lot. These are, in, these are kind of blanks that you'll see. There's no name on here. Uh, on one side, it says spare blades inside handle. You could see here. But, um... This one here, you can see it's it's nameless, which I always thought was interesting. This one here is a uh, like a chrome plating of some type and very nicely done. Uh, this one here, another interesting one because it's knurled on both sides. Now, when you're you like to do custom utility knives, this you know offers you a lot more flexibility to do something if you want to put color in here. And you can see this one's a painted gray again in nice shape, you know, and. Uh, this one here is nice, beautiful yellow paint on here. High visibility, spare blades inside again with the blank over here. But notice the blank is longer, you know, than over here. So every every tool manufacturer might have different specs on how they want it, but it's very close to the 199, as we could see the new 199. And then lastly, we have uh, this one here, and again, you could see this one's a different size than the other ones, and. Uh, 
just one just just said blade inside not blades just blade inside this one feels extremely light uh i can't tell you it's, it feels like almost half the weight of this one it's strange you know so i don't know if this one here was a different style or whatever but i always find that interesting the different variations and these are in such good shape i hate to uh you know, to mess them up, to put some, you know, different coloring or something like that. So these will probably go to the end of the list. Next up, uh, also in one of the lots that I got from uh, the other, there was this Craftsman. You can see here this Craftsman uh, utility knife. Now, this is one of those things that when you buy a, a utility knife on eBay, you have to be very careful. And don't be afraid to contact the seller uh, if you have a problem, before you try and leave a negative feedback, contact the someone. I'll tell you why. You have something like this. They show it like this, maybe the craftsman. And then they might show a picture like this, you know, like this. And again, they're hiding something. And then when you get it back, you see over here that there's a chip in the front, you know. And a lot of times people might not even notice it because uh, whatever. But this is where you have to contact the seller and say, listen, you know, a, a chip. To, and I'm not paying for return postage. So you either make it right or you're getting a negative feedback. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll just say, you know what, keep the knife. I'll refund your money, you know, because it, 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 it's not worth them to have that negative feedback. That makes a huge difference. But anyway, um. We have a, uh, a broken tip uh, knife here that we're going to try and just repair to make this some kind of a, uh, a presentation knife. Well, how could we possibly repair that? Again, you know, it's got a little chip up here. How could we possibly repair that so that it would make a decent presentation knife? It doesn't have to be a user, even though you want it to be able to be used. And... Uh, you know, we're looking at it here, and you can see this was a vintage Craftsman. They had that nice logo on here. So first thing we're going to do is clean this up and see what we can do about repairing that little chip in the front that what could we possibly do? Now, I don't know what kind of finish this was on here, but uh, this is the, uh, we took it down to a brushed satin over here. It looks very nice, doesn't it? And uh, took out all the scratches too. You have to just stay with it until the little scratches come out. But, you know, we have this side here to do yet. But you see the difference here and what it looked like. It uh, big difference here. I don't know what this finish, unless it's just tarnish over the age, over years. So let's go finish this Okay, we now. finished getting the uh, brush, the beautiful satin finish on both sides here. It looks just marvelous. Now what we're going to do is to address this chip to get the right profile. We're going to put some JB Weld in there, but we're going to uh, so we're not going to do it with the knife closed because it'll glue it to that side of the knife. So we're going to have to put some tape over there. But I want to show you the inside castings, which I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, if you look over here, let me get the light a little bit better so you can see. You can see it says General uh, Hardware, and you can see this is a number 850, made in the USA. And if you look over there real close, it says Newton. And New Haven, and they use the ends from the uh, beginning and the end. Isn't that nice? And they have that casting over here, that Newton and New Haven on that side over here. See? And uh, I always like the inside of the structures because uh, that's what gives the knife strength. So you can see here how this was done. And you can see the little form here so that the blades don't rattle around too much. Very nicely done. Okay, now we have a Q-tip with some alcohol and we're, we're cleaning that chip. Okay, we want to make sure there's no uh, debris or anything inside that chip, and we've got to prep it by using, uh, we have a 91% alcohol here, but it's a denatured alcohol. You can use either one, and this is a rubbing alcohol, but you can see it's cleaning it out nicely, and we'll let that dry, but we put a piece of tape over this side, put these two halves together, and now that won't stick to the other half, and we can fill it. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what it looked like before we started. Hey! And we're calling this project done. Now, you remember what this, uh, what we had to do for this, but you see the repair there? Uh, we did a pretty decent job. I mean, it's very hard to see, right? It's a nice little repair there. We painted it silver. I think it blends in pretty good. You know, it's something you wouldn't notice right away when you looked at the knife. So that's, I would consider that a successful repair. Uh, we did a little Craftsman in the Scout Crafter Red. We did it in a satin, but then we waxed it with that cleaner wax to give it a, a nice feel to it. It has a very nice feel. Now, again, it's different. That's a different finish altogether from the full polish you could see here. Some people prefer this. I prefer the full polish, but again, this one is, is more apt to be used and uh, won't show the scratches or the fingerprints for that matter. And... Uh, 
you can see here we baked in the the reds so that's in there for for good and uh, it's a nice knife huh just a nice style to it and that's our craftsman uh utility knife that uh we'll see what we're going to do with this one hey that was our last mosh of the year hope you have a great day take care now bye bye <laughs>